Hey, y'all. Happy Monday. Welcome back. So I'm sorry about missing you last week, but I had to head over to North Texas for a wedding and I didn't have the front end or the back end of this video and a little bit of the middle done. It was pouring rain over there, so it was kind of hard to fake it. So. <laughs> so anyhow, today's video is all about shade, shade, shade. All about the shade. Um, I've got videos way back, um, you know, going back to 2018 about different shade techniques, different things that you can use to shade. Um, but if you don't have a really well-defined microclimate in your backyard to accommodate your garden, um, you definitely want to look into, or you've got to have some type of shade system, structure, something set up, or you're not, it, it's going to be challenging to have a successful um, garden here in the summer. So, um, in today's video, I'm going to share with you, um, because back in, in the span of time since we've been in this house, you, you've seen video of where I had shade cloth up. I've had it up almost since the, about the second week we got in here, but for the most part, it was just laying on top of the trellis, and my goal is that things climb up the trellises, and, and if the shade cloth is there, then that's going to cause interference between what the plant's doing and trying to get into that shade cloth. So it was very important, and, and if you are, you know, if you saw that video and you're like, yeah, I'm just going to lay it on my shade cloth, well, if you really think anything's going to, or I'm just going to lay it on my trellis, if you think there's a chance that things will go up that trellis, then let's, you might consider doing something like this. So in the first little segment here, I'm going to show you like what it looked like when um, my husband and my son were preparing it. The little simple steps that we took to um, get the actual structure up and um, how that looked. And um, we just used PVC and um, I kind of mentioned in there some alternatives that you could use um, if you don't already have the stakes in place for the trellises like we do. Um, in the next part of the video, I'm going to be um, kind of showing you the the expanse of because I've got so many pieces of shade cloth and in my other yard it was a little bit different so I wanted a piece that would run the entire continuous length of it um, and I had enough to do that kind of twice so I put those pieces all together eventually at the end so one thing I didn't get to do and that's kind of the middle part is that I didn't show kind of it being finished off because that, that at the time when I was working on it right before I left I had just a bunch of appointments going on so it's like I'd have to do the task and run out the door so um, I'm gonna run over and show you um one an example which you've already seen before but i'm going to kind of just give you a reminder look around because right now it's it's high noon in in arizona in phoenix so um it's a good i i think it's a good time to kind of take a look at you know because this right here behind me um because this tree is here um it's already um probably one of the best luckily the luckiest little microclimate that i could plot myself down into because most of the plants here get dapple shade all throughout the day um that means there's light coming in enough to still stimulate the plant but not enough to burn or upset the plant and then from the west all of these plants get about four um three to four hours of really strong sun um that's sitting there in the west and everything's happy over here it's been producing and um like i said it's a real lucky microclimate for me to have um and there's a lot of ways to create microclimates and I'm, i probably need to get with some people I know that have awesome ones in their yard and um, kind of give you some better examples. But if you don't have that developed and you're just starting out, then you got to find some way to make yourself a little makeshift um, shade system. So let's get going on the video and um, then in the end, um, I'll do a little wrap up with you and we'll have some fun. In one of my videos about how I'd kind of put my shade cloth up in a jalopy manner meaning that it was just laying on the trellis here and the reason why that's not going to work long term is evident here this is where this loofah was trying to crawl past 
where the shade cloth was laying so i freed it last night so that it would have some room because i saw this happening with the leaf um, so in the middle of putting this up i just want to show you how scientific this is um, we kind of determined the height above which is roughly about a foot um, and for us it kind of lined up with the um, pvc pipes in some places, depending on how long they were, they ended up just kind of sitting right about here. And then we go in and we just use zip ties to anchor these to the pole. And each of the poles has got a little hole in it. You can kind of see there. So that's the way that we are able to really anchor that down solid so that it doesn't blow off in the wind. Um, now this side is completed. Um, so we're just looking at making the connection on the other side. And he was, he was a little reluctant at first, but I do want some cross beams going over um, just because this gets a little jiggly when the wind gets to going. So I just wanted to touch base and um, share that with you. This doesn't make for a long video because it's not really that simple now or not really that hard now with most things we're not going to glue these together um, we could if we had a place to store the entire structure for the season when we take it down but i don't um, i know people who do that um, so we don't glue them together and um, at the end of the season we just collect all the connecting points and we actually put them in like a red pillowcase <laughs> and then we pile up the pvc and we store it so um now we had to do a little bit um different setup here because obviously our yard's different and in our other yard we didn't have just one long continuous run so we did have to buy a little bit of pvc pipe that's what they're they've got over there and um, just a couple of connectors and I think that he misgaged a couple of connectors in order to make my cross beams but um, that's again the reason why I wanted to touch base so if you didn't have these posts then um, you could you know you because what babe do these come in eight feet 10 feet so the pvc pipe comes in 10 foot and it's a half inch pipe so another thing that you could do is you could come down here um, behind your thing or whatever you're trying to do and you could hammer down a piece of rebar into the ground and then you could poke your pvc pipe down into it and these pieces when they're long like this are quite malleable you know you can really if i had something to Put it up against right now like i don't that's probably not going to stay but you can really you know get a good bend on that because um i'm pretty sure it's in the square foot gardening book and probably even in the straw bell book they talk about using pvc pipes as a shade system you know so that's another way that you could do it if you didn't have these stakes already supporting some kind of frame um, and then from there you know there's probably a lot of other things in your yard that you could use to anchor down um, pvc pipe to create a simple shade structure for yourself um, again and this is important to me um, to have it up above the trellis so that the things that are coming along the trellis like this and our other constant measurement has been these beans so these beans are already on that side they're already up you know to like right here so they um and and, and if i let them stay then they're going to end up twining into the shade cloth too so this is just going to make it free for everything and anything because there's there's it doesn't look like it it looks like the tomatoes the main stage but there's a lot of stuff that's going to start climbing out of here and then this way it's got you know plenty of room between the trellis and the shade cloth to be able to do life so there you go have um the finished product of the structure that my husband and my oldest son seth put up yesterday so he's really really proud of it because it, it's just a lot cleaner and pretty linear <laughs> more so than it was um in the old garden um and so it looks pretty good so now i've got all the shade cloth down because i've got it 
laid out all over here in the shade um, so this is the full length of it and I'm thinking I'm gonna sew these side panels on too but my number one goal for right now is to get this longest run here sewn together because I've got some stuff I have to do today so that'll be my priorities if I can get that sewn up today that I can get that up there and I'll probably show you what that looks like and I'm just gonna clip it on then and then tomorrow I'll probably take it down and sew this other side on it even though I think I have a dentist appointment um, but then for for the time being um, I'm just gonna clamp it back here but then once I get it all sewn how I want then I'm gonna go in with my um, you know stuff I love twine jute jute because that's what I'm gonna be using to sew this up I'll, I'll grab it for you real quick see like here's an example of where I used some jute so I'm gonna use jute like this to tie um, these sections to the poles that they're closest to and um, let me grab my needles now I, I've got I got two different kinds of jute um, this is the kind I really like um, like, cause I tie my plants up, but I like that it's kind of soft. Cause if you ever get something real hard like this tight around your plant, which I don't do this tight, but it can, you know, it can choke that plant. So this is, I sent my husband to get me some jute and this is what I got back. So even though in the past, this is what I sewed them up with, I'd rather save what I have of that to do what I like to do with it. And these are actually some needles from some of the girls sewing kits that they've gotten over time you know for little kids where they're just pokey enough um, but they they go real easily into this so that's all I'm kind of doing is I'm just gonna go along not nearly that wide but I'll just go along and run a line so since I've got this twine here I don't even know if I'd classify it as jute um, this is what I'm going to use this time since I've got an excess of it I, I don't like it I, I don't ever really want to use it in my garden I'd use it for other stuff I don't I don't want to use it the way I use this so these are my tools and I'll touch base with you when I've got a section sewn together and like I said I, I'm always on a schedule with my chores so we're lucky that I even went and got the camera <laughs> honestly if if you've barely been in Arizona then you constantly hear about the dry heat and if you've been here <laughs> then you definitely know that like right now when I'm standing like in the full sun it's ghastly <laughs> but right over here under my shade cloth it's not so bad so this is what I kind of wanted to show you is you can see um, how I had two pieces here that were the same width and the same length and I came along and just tacked them um, about every two and a half three feet tack the two pieces together so they'll still flow and baffle in the wind but it also gave me where I could keep my sides long because at first I thought I would completely you know double up on both sides so it's doubled up about midway through all the way down the line and then again I need to come and split these a little bit and like right here is where I had um sewn two pieces together so this is easier because now that I know there's a light here then I can just pull um, this seam right here this seam of this jute out up to about right here and then it'll be easier to walk through here so over here though this plant so you can see everything under the shade cloth it looks very happy I mean this down here on the bottom of this this is just a bit older and at when I first got the shade cloth up, there wasn't enough coming down on this side. It's because you can see how this is the piece that ends from over here. And so now that this is here, then this plant has been able to go ahead and continue um, to be happy and grow. So everything under my shade cloth, like I said, looks really happy and is is really prospering so this is the final here and the only thing that i haven't done that i'm for sure going to do because right now all the shade cloth is just kind of clipped to here but i ran out of time but i'm going to go again along with my jute and about every joint of pvc i'm going to tack the shade cloth 
to the joint with um, some jute again. So that's just to help with the monsoon season. So again, you can tell how dramatic the difference is just looking at the shade over there compared to what's in full sun. And, and it's easy to see um, what a difference this makes um, for the plants over here. You can even see, like I said, this is this section right here, this shadow is where the shade cloth is completely doubled up. And then over here, it's a little bit lighter. Um, but this is where it ends up being the strongest of the sun. So um, this is the final product besides, like I said, coming in and cutting out just straight lines here so that the pieces will come down. But it is also during the day, it kind of is nice to have this walkway here. And um, so, <clears throat> and we tacked in these two stakes over here to keep it from actually being on the bell and now this loofah now sometimes I still have to pull her down out of the shade but at least I've got the shade up off and when I tack it to the PVC it'll keep it from dipping it at all really um, but there you go there's my whole garden under one continuous shade run so to another Okay, well I hope that gave you a little bit of inspiration for um, maybe how you could improve your shade structure, establish the shade structure. This week is the first um, big kick in the gut of triple digit temperatures um, way high this week. So anything that you can keep to keep going with a cooling effect in their yard. We just had our irrigation, so it's kind of got the yard a little humid, um, but also a little bit cooler than it would be, say, when we didn't have our irrigation. Um, even kind of every now and then running a sprinkler that's a way um, not on your plants but just in the yard around your plants is another way to kind of cool things down a little bit so again I hope this is inspirational I'm gonna try and drop another video this week um, about composting because I did get a request for that and I came up with a cool idea for building one in my bin so I'm gonna do that with you and then also building one in a smaller container so that that maybe you can do it anywhere and that might be a good little way to launch you off into composting so look out for that this week um, because next week we'll be rounding into a big reminder about what you can plant in July so have yourself an awesome day and I look forward to spending some more time with you oh.